Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to MPAX Ubin Day 2020 webinar. My name is Kaming, and I'm from the Pulau Ubin team at the National Parks Board. Pesa Ubin is our annual celebration of the different facets of Pulau Ubin, such as the natural and cultural heritage. During which, there will be many activities happening in Ubin. Through these activities, we hope that everyone will be able to learn about this beautiful island of ours. As for Ubin Day, it is the last hurrah and the culmination of our long celebration. This year, as we can't gather due to COVID, the organizing committee has decided to bring the celebration to you through its first ever virtual pasta Ubin and Ubin Day. Today is Ubin Day, so we have a very interesting lineup of talks for you. Here is an overview of today's talks. If you haven't signed up for these talks, fret not. You may still join us with the meeting links we share on the Zoom chat, or you may watch them live on our YouTube channel, NPARKSG, at your convenience. For those on Zoom, if you have any questions during the talk, please send them to me, co-host Teo Kaming, as a private message using the Zoom chat. We will try to address a few of them later on. Earlier this morning, we have delved into the history of architecture found in Ubin. We also had a speaker who shared with us about mangroves. Now, moving on to another domain, the inclusivity of Ubin. As our population is aging, accessibility becomes prominent in recent years. How do we ensure people of various mobility needs still enjoy access to places like the rest of us? pertinent to some of us, and this is even more so for Ubin. This is because we have a significant proportion of elderly among our residents and ex-residents. Taking a ferry becomes no easy feat for them. How do we make it easier for them? This gives rise to the birth of a group, Accessible Ubin. Founded by our speakers, Colin Chu and Albert Liu, this group advocates for Ubin to be more inclusive, more accessible, and safer for everyone, including people with different mobility needs. It is also part of the wider Friends of Ubin Network, also known as FUN. Last year, NPARKS, together with Accessible Ubin, announced the plan of building a wheelchair-friendly floating pontoon jetty. Want to find out more about their group and the new plan for the jetty? Let Colin and Albert tell you more. Colin and, uh, Colin and Albert, please. All right. Thank you, Kami. Albert, can I have you to mute your mic as well? Yeah. All right. Great. So I'll be taking over the screen sharing. Uh, Kami, could you stop sharing your screen? Thank you. All right. Okay, can everybody see my screen? All right, great. Thank you so much. All right, and thank you all for joining us today and welcome to our virtual Ubin Day 2020. My name is Colin and together with me is Albert. Albert, you want to say hello? Hi, everyone. Hi, okay. Hello. hello. All right. Thanks, Albert. Okay, so we are from Accessible Ubin and uh, today we'll be sharing with you some of the updates on the um, construction of the new jetty and also solicit some of your ideas um, for the design of this new jetty. So before we start off, uh, I want to understand a little bit about the profile of you guys and really I want to know you as well. Okay, so I'll be launching a poll in front of you right now. You should be able to see. I just want to know which of the following actually describes you best. Uh, are you a caregiver? Are you someone with a disability? Or are you a wheelchair user? Uh, when I mentioned about persons with disability, it could be a person uh, that is um, probably you're deaf or maybe you, are, uh, you have vision, uh, you have poor vision. So that's a person with disability. Or you could be a, a VWO member or you could be an elderly yourself uh, and, and or you are just a member of the public or interested volunteer. And that would be great because we need plenty of help here. All right. Or just an accessible Ubin supporter or an Ubin family member. 
Uh, so I just want to understand a little bit about you guys. So I'll give you all some time. I have about 11 out of 15 who have voted. I think there are a few of you who haven't voted. Okay, maybe you are using from your phone. You are, you're accessing this from your phone. Perhaps that's why you couldn't vote. Um, good, good. I see about 85, almost 90% of you have voted already. Mm -hmm. I still have people also coming in. They're streaming in as well. So maybe just give them a little bit of time before uh, we move on. 14 out of 16. Excellent, excellent. It's 90%. Uh, yes, okay. So from here, I can see about 50% or majority of you are members of the public. So perhaps let me end the poll and share the results with you guys, all right? Okay, so I think in front of you right now, you should be able to see the poll results with 50% of you all from members of the public. And we do have a, um, someone with, um, we have, do have people P, uh, PWDs with us. And that's great because uh, as much as we can, we want a diverse crowd in this um, uh, session with you. Excellent. So we have interested volunteers as well. So later on at the end of the session, uh, we do have a QR code. Uh, you can always feel free to join us on our Facebook page or even on our giftasia.com. And then you can let us know if you want to be a volunteer. All right. So thank you so much. I will stop sharing the results. So before we start off the whole entire Accessible Ubin, some of you could be uh, members of the public, so you might want to know Ubin a little bit better. So I will hand it over to uh, my buddy, Albert. Uh, my co-founder Albert to take you on a tour of what Ubin is in a very in a very short one minute. So Albert, over to you. Okay, thanks, Colin. Right. So, um, for for people who are uh, not familiar, Ubin Pulau Ubin is in the northeast of Singapore, as you can see on the map here. It's a northeast island. We actually need to take about a ten minute uh, bamboo ride um, from uh, Changi Point Jetty, which is near Changi Village. To head over to the island. So what is so special about uh, Ubin? Right, so there's a lot of uh, history actually on uh, Ubin. In the left picture, you can see uh, this is the old, uh, one of the old livelihoods. They actually dug up a lot of uh, granite from uh, Ubin. The name Ubin actually comes from the Malay word Jubin, which means granite. And uh, a lot of these um, granite Actually, it's used to build some of our structures on uh, main island Singapore, like uh, the Raffles Lighthouse and the Causeway. So uh, there's a lot of history that is uh, interconnected uh, to Pulau Ubin. Um, and on the top right photo, you see uh, people taking the bum boat to Ubin. We have retained this um, mode of transportation today when we came to Ubin. We also continue to take uh, the bum boat. So the journey to Ubin, um, your tour to Ubin starts on the journey there. Uh, and not when you're physically on Ubin. And at the bottom right, you see this actually um, World War II guns uh, that were installed um, in Ubin you know, as part of the World War II preparation many years ago. So next. So there's also a lot of nature and landscape. Um, today, many people enjoy nature and landscape because COVID-19 has forced them out of uh, urban spaces and people have started to really appreciate uh, nature areas. You would see um, the left, uh, picture that is the view you get uh, at the highest point on Pulau Ubin. This is a uh, Puaka Hill and it overlooks a quarry, very beautiful and serene. Uh, on the right, you see all different pictures of uh, biodiversity you can find on Ubin, like the Oriental Pied Hornbill, the Wild Boar, the Common Rose, which is the butterfly. It's not so common anymore, but yesterday it was called the Common Rose and the uh, Fiddler Crab, uh, which you can see has uh, one arm larger than the other. So these are things you can see on Ubin, and Ubin is rich in biodiversity. You also get heritage and culture on Ubin. On the left, you see uh, residents. So they are living um, kampongs on Pulau Ubin, the last of which on, uh, on Singapore. So you have residents continue to live a very traditional lifestyle. Yes, and uh, on the right, you see a uh, wayang stage still continue to be used Today, um, this was taken during a uh, Dopekong festival, which is a, a religious festival during the month of May, just prior to Pisak Day. So the performances go live uh, and you know people do it here, not for visitors, but really it's for the residents. So the people here who live on Ubin continue to hold practices like this. And we also have outdoor education and research. There are camping grounds, as you can see on the left, 
there are places you can continue to do mountain biking and the bottom right you see uh, kayaking this is uh, this was my own photo i, I kayak through a river uh, within pula ubin very serene very special and so ubin is very diverse has many things to offer everyone and uh, so this is really a quick introduction about uh, pula ubin all right Thank you, Albert, for bringing us on a very quick tour around Ubin and a very quick introduction of what Ubin is and how beautiful it is. But this beauty must be enjoyed by everyone. And that's hold the whole idea of the mission of Accessible Ubin. So it's a ground-up initiative uh, started by, of course, um, Albert and myself to make Ubin more safe and accessible. And in that way, it is inclusive for every person to be able to access this beauty on the island. And who are we, who are we designing it for? Of course, it's more for the visitors and also for the Ubin residents. So it's founded in 2017 and we advocate Ubin for all. So Ubin for everyone. So let me start on the journey. Before we all go to uh, Ubin, we always have to take a bamboo. That is the exact starting point of every single person's journey because the bamboo is currently the only transport there and we definitely want to keep that because that attains the rusticness of Ubin and that's the beauty of it. So from this, I, from the Changi Chetty point, what is it accessible? This is where we all start our journey. So we will start starting the entire journey from Changi Jetty point, uh, Changi Point Jetty uh, ferry terminal, ferry point, before we go all the way to Ubin Jetty. So as you can see the, from the pictures itself, um, it's pretty much generally accessible. Um, the ramps are, are not steep. Um, they are also very gentle. There are no, no steps around. So it's actually quite accessible. Next, you go on to the bum boat. Now you can see there's always this gap between the platform as well as the bum boat. So this is somewhere that if a person is on wheelchair or if you are a person with disabilities, that is where it is an issue because there's this gap that you need to overcome. And next is, of course, at the Ubin Jetty, which is of, uh, I think for those of you who have been to Ubin Jetty, I'm sure you, very, you will know this staircase very well because this is where you disembark from the bum boat. And as you can see, there's so much algae growth on it. The steps, there are so many steps to overcome and it's always slippery because it's constantly wet. And even for, for users, as you can see in the top left corner, who are cyclists, when they want to bring their bicycles over, they have to always be very, very careful. So Ubin Jetty is not accessible at all. So after looking through all the issues that we have from the Changi Point uh, all the way to Ubin Jetty, uh, you can see that the key challenges, of course, Ubin Jetty is not accessible, it's not safe at all, many steps to overcome, slippery surfaces because of the algae growth, and of course the bum boats themselves are also not very accessible because of the gap between the platform and also the boat. So how do we, how do we overcome these challenges? Now, uh, the first thing that we did in 2017 was to do a focus group discussion where we consulted a very diverse group of people all the way from government agencies to the community as well as persons with disability, caretakers, and wheelchair users. So that sparked off a lot of discussion and that helped us in the formulation of our proposal. And of course, not forgetting, every time we do a focus group discussion, we also bring it to our Friends of Obi Network meeting, which happens quarterly. Um, and this is where we also generate um, more comments as well as more inputs from the villagers, from the Obin residents, and as well as the fun, uh, the fun community, which is the Friends of Obi Network. So, after the, the very diverse um, consultations with everyone, um, there are, of course, proposed solutions. So, I will dive right straight into our final proposed solution, which is a new jetty as floating pontoon that can change with the tide. Of course, as you know, the current jetty at Ubin cannot change with the tide. There are steps that helps you to go up this, the, the, the jetty. And of course, um, the other solution to overcome the bum boat, which is not very accessible, the gap, we have ramps that need to bridge over um, the, between the platform as well as the boat. So this gives a very safe and smooth transition. And these are some of the... Um, uh, so this is where the new floating pontoon, uh, floating jetty, uh, will be located. It is at the Ubin Living Lab. All right, it's somewhere towards the um, west side of the Ubin Island. Uh, it's a little bit more sheltered. So the advantages, the advantages of having this new jetty with a floating pontoon is that it changes with tides, of course, so that you do not have to be concerned about the the tiding, the tides up and down. And there's few new moving parts um, because so that it's easy to function and maintain. And it's also very scalable because these are all built modular. So in in that sense, if you, lead, if you need to have more bum boats to berth at this new jetty, you can actually add on more um, floating pontoons to it. But the downside of things is that, of course, to construct this jetty, when we consulted the contractors, uh, a few consultations with the contractors for quotation, um, it came up to a very high cost. In fact, we were uh, we had this idea in 2017, uh, 2018, um, 
that we hope to crowdfund uh, this jetty. But in the end, because the costs were too high, so we need to find a way to fund this uh, properly. So how do we do that? But before we go there, I would just want to share with you some of the images that we conceptualized uh, between Albert and myself. And these are some of the images that we also show to not only the users, uh, but also to the fund community and during the, cons the, 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 the consultation sessions with everyone. So these are some of the images that we show. As you can see, this is the Ubin Living Lab. Some of you may not have been there, but it's a, you can come and see now it's, it's open to public. Uh, this is a place that will be, um, this is where the new Ubin Jetty and the new Jetty will be built, all right? Okay, so why do we do it at the Ubin Living Lab? Now you can see from this image here, so I hope you can see my cursor. Um, yeah, this is where my cursor is. This is where we usually will, will embark from. This is where Changi Jetty is, all right? The usual journey is towards the Ubin Jetty along this first yellow line here to the Ubin Jetty. Now, this new one that we were constructing is at where Ubin Living Lab is located. So this is Pulau Ubin Island, and this is Pulau Ketam, one small little island of uh, Pulau Ubin. And this area was selected because it's a shallow beach and it's a sheltered location. Why do we need a sheltered location? It's very important that the passing waves do not affect the boats because the passing waves, that any big ships that come by, will actually cause a lot of ripples. And the passing boat will, will make it unsafe uh, for this embark for this embarking on from the boat onto the platform. So it's very important that we choose a very sheltered location where there's Pulau Katam to help us show off the passing waves. And of course, it's an alternative main uh, site from the main jetty. This is where the main jetty is. This is an alternative site and it's an important node in the West because Ubin Living Lab is set for future developments and it could be a second town center. And of course, uh, we, because it's going to be a second town center, we want to complement the activities that's in the Ubin Living Lab. So therefore, Ubin Living Lab uh, was selected. And really, uh, the idea of having it at Ubin Living Lab was also through the consultations with our fund meeting members, uh, and it's uh, one of the suggestions from them. So I mentioned about previously about the funding. So you, we conceptualized the idea, we have the design, and now where do we get the funding? So initially we wanted to uh, crowdfund, but we realized it was too expensive. So um, how do we get it? In the end, in 2019, last year, uh, in June, um, we are very, very happy and very grateful that MPAX, uh, or MND, Ministry of National Development, as well as MPAX has decided to fund this project. So um, I extracted a quote here from our minister, Desmond Lee, who said that I'm also very happy to share that in collaboration with Accessible Ubin, a new accessible jetty will be constructed at the Ubin Living Lab. So this new jetty will allow safe and convenient access for wheelchair users and will serve as an alternative entry point for those with mobility needs. So the newspaper cutting, as you can see on the left-hand side with Albert, um, holding on to an artist's impression that you guys have seen earlier. Uh, it's a newspaper article and this was a great milestone for all of us. And of course, with that, I would like to thank all our accessible Ubin supporters as well as volunteers for supporting us throughout this journey to come to this milestone. So thank you very much. And next, since we have solved the problem of the floating pontoon that has been funded, so what's next is our ramps okay so because uh, the bump boats is not very uh, the, the, the gap between the platform and the boat is not very accessible uh so we need ramps to um be included so how do we go about doing it this was actually a screenshot from our um, media launch a media release on um, in june last year all right in june last year and we are proposing to have a bridge uh, ramps to actually bridge the gap between the platform and the boat and but before we go to that, I just want to show you a video from Pesta Raya also last year. So after the announcement, we had, uh, uh, before the, the Pesta, uh, Pesta Ubin Day last year, we had Pesta Raya. I just want to share with you a video. And from there, you can see how do we manage to overcome this gap between the uh, platform and the boat. Pesta Raya Ubin ini adalah satu pesta yang bagus lah untuk diadakan supaya orang kampung yang Pulau Ubin yang lama tak berjumpa dapat bersua kembali 
bila dapat berjumpa dengan sanak saudara, orang-orang kampung, makcik yang lama-lama tu dah lama kita tak jumpa. Alhamdulillah berserta pula dengan ada persembahan. Itu yang makcik rasa gembira sangat. Kita memang asal dilahirkan di sini. Jadi bila dah lama sangat pindah ke bandar tu, terasa ada peluang untuk balik semula kat sini. Jadi kita macam sukalah. Well, I used to play around here with all my childhood friends. Just the the childhood memories is, um, yeah, that's what I really enjoy. It gets all of us together, not only the, the young generation, the old generation here as well. My hope is that this nature thing should be preserved, and I hope that they, the MPAP keep their good efforts of doing all these sort of things, which is really great. Everybody could enjoy this thing, and I thank you very much for the MPAP for doing this. Kalau dia buatkan pesta hari raya ni tiap-tiap tahun keluarga Pak Mat datang anak-anak cucu dari Pak Mat dapat berjumpa. Mudah-mudahan pesta ini dapat diadakan setiap tahun dan dapat merapatkan silaturahim. rahim. Alright, so I'd just like to thank MPAX for producing this video and I'm not sure if you managed to catch some of us in action uh, using a roller ramp to actually bridge the gap between, oh, between the platform and the boat and this is a snapshot from the video itself and I think the video also show a very nice setting where the Ubin villagers are actually benefiting from this uh, accessible Ubin initiative. So with this picture you can actually see the deployment of our roller ramp onto the platform. I'd just like to show you another video that we and to show you how exactly do we deploy this roller ramp on uh, Ubin itself. So it, I will just describe as we go along. So as you can see, this roller ramp it's actually pretty quite heavy. It's pretty heavy. So we do need volunteers with physical strength to help us deploy the ramp. And of course, the ramp is also um, of courtesy from SPD um, as well as EWA. Uh, these are the two agencies. Uh, these are the two VWOs that we approach uh, to lend us this ramp. And really, thank you very much. I think I see some of you in this session as well. So now that you can see that it's being deployed, we will have to ensure that it's stable and there are no passing waves coming in. So because this area is actually the MPCC um, jetty and the, 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 the distance between the platform as well as the boat is actually quite big. So the ramp becomes a bit steeper than normal. So uh, now that once we ensure that there's no passing waves, you can easily push the person up onto the platform. So this was the, the entire deployment of a roller ramp to bridge between the boat as well as the uh, jetty. Uh, this is the second one. So these are all, uh, I think it's Madam Kamaraya's uh, uh, Ubin resident's mother. Um, yeah, so we managed to bring them back for our event, Pesta Raya, all right? That was last year during 2019. And this is uh, Madam Kamaraya's dad. So you can see there's a lot of difficulties um, um, it, when you deploy when you want to have an operation like this, um, it depends a lot on the timing of the tides. It depends a lot of um, uh, manpower where we need to deploy our ramps. And you can see the ramp is slightly tilted already. I think because of the boat that has a little bit of movement due to passing waves. All right. So it's very important once we deploy, uh, the, the, uh, once we have everyone embarked onto the platform, we have to quickly remove the ramp so that in case if there's any passing waves, the boat will not, will, the boat will have to leave um, the berth, uh, the the ramp itself, uh, the platform itself. Okay, so now that uh, we have shared with you. Um, the entire proposal and we shared with you the ideas and how we overcome. So now, um, before the jetty, the new jetty is ready. Um, of course, um, we need to assist visitors and Ubin residents to go back to Ubin. But this kind of arrangement uh, requires a lot of exclusive um, special arrangement and there are many challenges involved because there are many people that we need to liaise with. For example, as shown here, there are many agencies uh, involved, the Outbound School Singapore for the speedboat, the MPCC for the jetty, Singapore Food Agency because we are borrowing a Lorong Halus uh, platform and we don't actually uh, we don't actually embark from the Changi Point ferry. Uh, we actually did emb uh, embark from the Lorong Halus uh, ferry, uh, Lorong Halus jetty, and that's actually owned by the Singapore Food Agency. We also have MPARKS helping us, and we also have uh, SPD serving people with disabilities. They are the ones who actually lend us uh, ramps, roller ramps, as well as the straight ramps, uh, AWR also. So we had a lot of help from these different people. So I just want to bring in the partners. Um, EWA SPD for the ramps and wheelchairs. Yes, I almost forgot about this. And from our bound school, um, Singapore Food Agency, as well as MPCC for the accessible speedboat that you can see with boatmen and also the jetty. 
Um, and of course, MPAX for tying all of these people together and with us. So really, thank you very much for all these agencies who have been so supportive of us and allowing the Ubi residents to go back to the island. And of course, um, it requires very complex coordination because we need to watch out the timing, the tides, the journey to the MPCC jetty. We need to make sure everybody the gate is unlocked so that we can get access onto the island itself from MPCC. And we also need to stand by a lot of vans um, to bring the residents onto the um, Pesta Raya site. So it requires a lot of op uh, time, uh, tight and time de um, dependent, a lot of logistics preparation and many volunteers because we need people to help deploy the, the ramp. Uh, and of course, we have to borrow ramps from SPD and AWA. And again, um, I want to say that um, thank you, SPD and AWA, but this time round, we also crowdsourced and we crowdfunded uh, for a ramp ourselves. And we managed to actually crowdfund a roller ramp. And thank you so much for all those who have supported us. We managed to raise about $3,441. Um, of course, we still welcome more donors and definitely we are accountable for all of the money that is being donated to us. So thank you very much and for allowing us to own our very own ramp. Uh, and of course, hopefully in future, this ramp will not just be deployed uh, in the, as an interim solution right now. And we are also looking into uh, deploying the ramp when the jetty is ready, all right? So, um, after sharing so much about the entire process, again, I repeat from our uh, idea initiation to the idea proposal to having it funded and built and to some of the solutions that we have shown you as an interim solutions. So, just like to share with you a series of stories uh, since 2017 and the activities that we have done uh, in action um, to, then, uh, to date. All right. So, in 2017, we first brought actually five um, persons with disability across or wheelchair users across onto, island, onto the island on Ubin Day in 2017. And we are not, of course, uh, met with, um, we definitely, it's not smooth sailing as what we have seen earlier because this, we met with plenty of problems. Now, one of the first challenge was this was actually uh, they embarked from the Changi Sailing Club. And over there, because of the shallow waters, uh, there's quite shallow waters at the point, it was very low tide, the boat couldn't um, berth um, vertically. So it has to berth horizontally and end up, it couldn't deploy uh, the ramp. And therefore, we have to carry these people are the, we have to carry wheelchair users onto the boat. And I think this is something that we have overlooked um, perhaps in future. This was a good lesson for us to learn. But we managed to successfully still bring them over. And uh, we are ha very happy that we managed to bring five of them over. And this was a really good experience for us. And of course, uh, in Pesta Raya, 2019, we also brought in five residents uh, over to the island. And um, I think the residents, maybe Albert, you want to help, help me with this on the, um, who are the residents that we have brought over? And uh, maybe Albert, you want to elaborate further on that? Okay, thank you, Colin. Yeah, so uh, Peta Raya, as you all saw in the video earlier, so the purpose of this uh, festival um, was really to connect uh, the Ubin residents uh, past and present, uh, connect them back to the island because some of them haven't been back to Ubin for uh, more than a, a few years. It's been decades for some of them. And also to allow them to reconnect with each other. You can see in the photos, we have um, the Malay and as well as our Chinese residents. Uh, so in the past, um, you know, they although they live in separate kampongs, uh, they would speak with each other. You can see in the bottom right photo where um, this uh, resident on wheelchair uh, speaking to some of her previous uh, neighbors when she was uh, living on Ubin. So these are uh, so some of the other residents we have brought across. Um, you would see in the uh, lower left uh, photo uh, that was uh, we call Hombil uh, auntie. So basically she's been uh, living on uh, Ubin for many years and uh, over the last uh, three years her health has deteriorated and therefore she's been uh, She's come back to Singapore uh, to seek uh, medical treatment. And uh, she's been yearning to go back to Ubin. And uh, this uh, operation allowed us to bring her back home. And uh, she's usually very stern, but in the photo you see above in the group photo, you can see she's almost giving a light smile. So it was a very, very nice uh, activity that uh, we, meaningful activity we held. Uh, we also brought back um, one of the Ubin residents' uh, parents very old, uh, they were in their, they're in their 70s. And for them, you know, to celebrate Hari Raya, because this was held during the Hari Raya season, uh, for them to be cel celebrate Hari Raya back on their home island of Pulau Ubin was especially meaningful for them. And uh, they gave us a lot of their uh, uh, words of thanks. So that was our uh, Pesta Raya. 
So in uh, later that year, um, as uh, Colin mentioned earlier, we had the announcement of the new jetty with the floating pontoon. After the announcement, uh, we had a uh, home nursing foundation, a uh, VWO, contacted us uh, through Facebook uh, saying, you know, we have a patient under our care and uh, he has uh, been wishing to go back to Pula Ubin and they didn't know um, what, what way they could bring him back. And so they contacted us, we liaised with uh, NPARCS and again, we decided to bring him home. So as you see on the uh, Straits Times article, he hasn't been back in uh, 50 years and he was really very happy to come back home. Um, we don't have the time to show you the full video, but in your own free time later, you can search. Um, there's a Straits Times video as well as a Lian He Zhao Bao video uh, done on this. Uh, and you can see Mr. Lai, um, after so many years he came back, uh, the, his friends still remember him, as you can see in the bottom right photo. A lot of them, uh, you know, it's uh, very heartwarming to see the old residents catch up. And for him, uh, at the end of the video, uh, he said something very meaningful, which touched all of our hearts. He said, um, if he were to go now, you know, he'll be also contented because he has finally been back home. It's almost like uh, fulfilling a wish for him. And so uh, we've been very privileged to be part of this uh, experience and journey. And, and actually, the RAM was also um, firstly deployed by first deployed by us. Uh, I saying firstly the first deployed as a crowd south um, crowd funded RAM. So you can see the roller RAM here was uh, crowd funded by you all uh, who have supported us in this course. So um, during the circuit breaker period, of course, COVID nineteen hit us during this period, and in April. Um, during the circuit breaker period, we also played as an essential service because we do have residents who needed to go back onto the main island for a medical appointment. So as you can see here, um, we have um, Uncle Bota, who, is, um, who um, unfortunately has uh, his foot amputated and he needs to go back to the main island for uh, medical appointments. And uh, during that time, he actually wanted to come back very, very quickly. So uh, we were also there to support during this period to provide an essential service and bring him back to um, after his foot uh, was amputated. So he was really, really happy. And as you can see from all the examples so far, uh, way back to 2017 to all the way um, to the CB period and even until today, we are not only connecting people on the island physically, more importantly, I think we are connecting the hearts of the Ubin residents to the current residents on Ubin. So, What's the way forward after this? Uh, of course, as you all know, COVID-19 struck us this year and it has delayed the completion of the jetty. So this is the time that we want to optimize the opportunity for you to strengthen the design and features. And therefore, uh, we hope to seek your inputs as well. So just before we go into that, I want just to show you a preliminary design. Um, MPUX has already um, um, has already. Uh, gotten and a consultant on board, a team of consultants on board to, to, to realize this project. So thank you very much again to MPAX for realizing this project. So we have the consultant on board and this is one of the preliminary designs that I'm sharing with all of you. It's, I think it's one of the first time that you're going to see this because I don't think it's published anywhere just yet. So this is a preliminary design I just want to qualify. As you can see on the right-hand side is where the Ubin Living Lab is. That is where the, the main uh, shore is, shoreline is. And that's the arrival point, we call it the arrival pavilion. And following that, you can see a gangway that follows thereafter and leads on to the floating pontoon. So uh, in terms of conceptual, from the conceptual images that you have seen earlier that Accessible Ubin has done to the uh, preliminary design that our consultants have done, you can see there's a lot of similarities and we really thank uh, the consultant teams for taking in um, our inputs as well. Um, but now we want your participation and want your inputs. So give us your, some of your ideas so that we can enhance this design of the jetty even better. Now, of course, um, I think we see a, quite a varied um, profile file of um, demographics of uh, people who are joining us today. Um, so you can think from your point of view as a potential user coming on to Ubin, whether you are persons with disability or whether you are a parent uh, who have kids and you intend to bring children across or whether you are a wheelchair user or if you're an elderly who needs uh, mobility assistance or if you know of people who needs uh, assistance, mobility assistance and would like to visit the island or you just want to give a change maybe to your parents to come and visit the island, um, you can also come in and 
and think of it as a potential user. We also welcome educators uh, with groups of children. Uh, that means you're going to bring children over to, to let them understand about the beauty of uh, Ubin and also potential cyclists. I hope there are some avid cyclists out there. Uh, you can think from all these different points of views how you think this jetty can be improved further uh, more than just a very utilitarian or very functional use of uh, buffing a boat and going on board. So, um, this is the polling time. Um, for those of you who have smartphones, uh, I hope you are, and you're accessing from your desktop, you can always scan this QR code and then we can link you to the uh, Mentimeter. Uh, for those of you who uh, do not have the link, um, let me drop the link onto, onto the um, chat group. Let's see if you can access the link. Okay, so give me a moment. Huh? Okay, give me a moment. I will share the link with you guys. Okay, let me copy this out. Copy a link and let me drop into the chat. Okay, everyone in the meeting. Okay, so you guys can go in and uh, let me launch the so I think some of you are probably in already. I will now change to share my uh, screen to the um, Mentimeter. All right. So let me present it. Okay. So uh, to help you with the um, Mentimeter or to help you, to help me um, include some of the features that you would like to see at the new jetty, because the next question will be, what do you want to see nearby the new jetty? So at the new jetty, what would you like to see? So I've put in some images here. Uh, could it be grab bus? Um, maybe you want more grab bus to be on the jetty itself. Would you want to have a designated accessible vehicular drop-off? Would you want to have more shaded spaces, more resting benches and sitting area? Would you like to have, see a, a community art gallery um, within the jetty itself, within the new jetty? Or if you have, if you have any other uh, ideas from the point of a user, from the point of maybe a wheelchair user, from the point of a caretaker, from the point of uh, a cyclist, from the viewpoint of a parent or uh, from the viewpoint of bringing your parents with uh, disabilities or parents with mobility issues, uh, we would like to welcome your ideas. So let me hide this image and see some of the ideas that you guys have given us. Okay, great. Nice. I see seating spaces. Okay. Uh, grab car point. Grab car point. Mm, grab car. Oh, okay. Okay. So you want to grab car point. Uh, food. Okay. I see people want food. Ample seats so that people can wait. Okay. Good, good idea. Uh, accessible toilets, water dispensers, flora and fauna. Excellent. Excellent. Wow. Okay. Thank you so much. I see 15 people actually uh, giving us our good ideas. Um, water coolers. Okay. Thoughtfully placed grab bars. I think this is a very important point. Okay. Do note that all these pointers, we will be taking it back to our consultants and hopefully we want to incorporate all these ideas into our new design. So transport subsidies for elderly residents. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. Good idea. Okay. I think that's a good point. You have thought through this very, very well already. Thank you so much. Um, sitting areas with shelter. It's useful during, yes, okay, yes. Solar panels, wow, okay, sustainability, excellent. I think that's one point that we, we, we will definitely think about. Um, of course, um, when we have solar panels, we also need to uh, see whether the area would it affect any, uh, would it cause any glare, would it have any e effects on the biodiversity as well. As you all know, Pulau Ubin is a place of great biodiversity and, and um, um, uh, home to a lot of plants and as well as animals. Okay, good. Thank you very much. I think I will move on to our next poll. Oh, sorry. Yes. So what are the features that you would like to see at uh, to see nearby the new jetty? So nearby, uh, that means it's not at the new jetty itself, it's nearby the new jetty. So I have some of the pictures that, um, that could probably uh, help you think that through. Um, pavilions, especially when there's large groups of school students that come in, maybe some shower facilities. Um, some of you who are cyclists want to use it as an end point before you go back to the main island, maybe some shower facilities, bicycle racks, perhaps for you to, to um, or maybe even bicycle shops that rent bicycles perhaps could be also located nearby this new jetty or diaper changing stations because um, of course, I think some people who bring um, elderly 
uh, people around or bringing them to the island. They could they might want to use the toilet very quickly or just have a good change. Uh, at well, the moment they they embark onto the island, so uh, this embark onto the island, so that could be uh, an item that we have. Okay, I only see two inputs so far. Can I, can I have a little bit more ideas in here? It's okay if you want to repeat some of our pointers. Uh, we definitely welcome all pointers as well. So uh, vending machines, maybe we could have a little bit more. Now we have uh, vending machines all over the place, um, almost becoming like Japan. But perhaps this could be good because it does not require uh, manpower. And uh, all you need is just someone to, can, who, can dispatch, who can come and replenish the, the stocks. Uh, maybe serving hot foods as well for vending machines. So let's have a look at some of the ideas that we have here. Toilets, shops, okay, bicycle rack. Okay, great. So we can ride from here and return at the Urban Jetty. Nice. Bicycle shops, mama shops, drink store, heritage type. Okay, that's this good uh, ideas. Yes, very good. Thank you. Area for children to play. Oh, yeah, a good playground for them. That's, that's also a good idea. Uh, simple boulders to climb. Okay, I think that could be incorporated as maybe part of the Urban Living Lab um, development. Waste bins. Oh, okay. Waste bins. Understand. Maybe also recycle bins. Maybe also compost bins as well. Accessible toilets. Thank you. Um, maybe just to note, um, in within Ubin Living Lab, there's also already um, um, accessible toilets in here. Um, uh, but it's quite a distance uh, from the jetty. So accessible toilets could be, we could also include that as part of the, um, the uh, ideas. And definitely, I want to reiterate again, we will bring back all these ideas to our consultants uh, as part of the design enhancement and design inputs. Info kiosk, heritage gallery. Wow, thank you so much. Exercise stations. Great, great. But you could also go around the island and enjoy the beauty while exercising as well. <laughs> or maybe if you have specific equipment that you wish to see as an exercise station, uh, you could also include here. All right. Excellent. I have uh, good, a, lot of, a lot of good ideas coming in. Okay, okay. I think we are running short of time, so um, I will just go on to the next one. All right. Okay, and our last question is um, actually, uh, hopefully, we as this jetty is going to be built, what would you like to name the new jetty? So I'd just like to hear from all of you. Uh, they have given you three options there. First is the Ubing Living Lab Jetty. And the second, we have Jetty Kampong. Um, and in Chinese, of course, we have a Chinese name for that. It's Chiming Ma Tou. Oh, wow. I think we have uh, a name. Uh, one, one person voting for that already. All right. Let's explain the other ones as well. Yeah. Okay, can we have a little bit more uh, ideas in there? Yes, and then, yes, okay, I see someone voting for Jetty Sayang as well. So Jetty Kampong, uh, we also consulted some of the residents here, uh, the Malay residents also, uh, on what kind of a naming would you like to have for this Jetty. So Jetty Sayang, okay, that sounds great. I think a lot of them uh, actually like Jetty Sayang because it's a lot more about caring, about being inclusive. Jetty Kampong talks about the community spirit of this uh, place, of this island. Uh, yeah, we still have people coming in, excellent. Okay, I hope I hope she can participate in this uh, poll as well. You just have to go to mentimeter.com and key in the code that's right above and you can get to here. Excellent. Wow, I can see that uh, really <laughs> Jetty Sayang was quite a popular choice, right, Albert? Okay, so Jetty Sayang. Oh, okay, now it's a fierce competition between the two. I, I hope to, before we end this, I hope there could be some clear winner. Otherwise, I would have a bit of issues here. Uh, okay, I think Jetty Kampong now seems to be leading the uh, preference of our attendees here. Okay, I see a signal to end this quickly. Uh, so thank you so much for your, um, for your votes and I will end this uh, Mentimeter uh, and I will go into our, um, back to our slides and all right. So thank you so much for your voting. Uh, I think you can still continue voting because I'm still keeping that on. Um, so I just want to quickly summarize uh, Accessible Ubin. So it's a ground initiative. And of course, our mission is to enhance the safety and accessibility to Ubin so that everybody can enjoy this beautiful Emerald Island and therefore being inclusive. So give us the support. Uh, you can either support us through funding, donate to us, uh, to our Give, Fund, Give Asia, or you can volunteer, give us some manpower, or you can spread the word for us so that we can have more awareness and we can have 
more support for accessible Ubin. So these are some of the um, uh, slides that, uh, sorry, these are the, our Facebook page, uh, which, which we have set up actually in 2017. We also have our Instagram page as well. Um, and also our Give uh, Asia Fund funding page. Uh, you can scan the QR codes. Um, if not, uh, we can also later on uh, go to our Facebook page. You can always see the links there as well. All right. So in case if you're looking out for us on Facebook, it's called Accessible Ubin. All right. So it's Accessible Ubin. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. And of course, support us. Uh, we also have an Instagram page. If you want to look for us on Instagram, we are also available there. It's accessible underscore Ubin. So thank you so much for joining us today. And I hope you guys enjoyed our sharing and have also an update. And really thank you for your inputs to enhance this jetty further. So thank you. Uh, on behalf of Albert, I think he's muted right now. Uh, thank you for joining us. And thank you, MPAX, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So back to you, Kami. Thank you, Colin and Albert. Okay, now we will come to the Q&A session. It will be a quick one in the interest of time. So I think just now, some of these have already been um, tackled. Maybe would you need to add on anything? Like question one and question three. Okay, I think uh, we have a question on... Uh... Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Uh, question one, are there transport subsidies? Um, Albert, do you want to reply that? Uh, I think we can't hear you. You need to unmute the mic. Yeah, yeah why not we uh, go through question two and three first? Um, okay, so um, the module for the floating uh, jetty be awarded through tender, or is the tender already over? Uh, so uh, where's the design phase um, right now, and I, once uh, that has been done, a tender will be called. Uh, so, so essentially, the tender is not over yet. Um, as we mentioned earlier, we are now only in the design phase with the consultants. Um, yeah. So uh, maybe, yeah, Albert, to add on to it, this is only the consultation uh, stage where consultants are being um, uh, on board. Um, the next stage, of course, would be our um, call for tender to construct. So um, if you are interested, tenderer uh, for construction, uh, definitely we welcome you to come for, to look out for the tender later on. But uh, this is still the design phase. Uh, we haven't gotten into the calling for tender for construction phase just yet. So uh, maybe you can look into somewhat maybe next year, uh, early next year, quarter one, two, zero, two, one. Uh, look out for the open tender. Uh, of this uh, construction of this project. All right. So with regards to question three, uh, are there accessible toilets in Ubin? Yes, uh, there are accessible toilets in the Ubin Living Lab, as I've mentioned earlier. Uh, and we also have ambulance-friendly uh, uh, toilets as well. Um, there is also an existing toilet along Jalan uh, Endut Senin with accessible toilet uh, over there as well. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, Albert, you want to add on something? Yeah, okay, so, so let's uh, go to question one. Are there uh, transport, sub there are two parts to this. Uh, so are there transport subsidies for the elderly residents with disabilities? Uh, so Accessible Ubin is a, a ground-up initiative. We are not a part of the government agencies. We don't dish out uh, any subsidies, but the Ministry of Social and Family Development uh, naturally would have uh, subsidies uh, for not just uh, elderly residents, but also um, people with uh, disabilities and uh, the low-income families as well. So, uh, they are covered uh, under the national scheme. There's no um, special scheme that we cover them over uh, from accessible Ubin point of view. Uh, so the next part of it is uh, how are uh, residents living near the Ubin jetty uh, get to Ubin Living Lab to access the uh, floating platform uh, if they're wheelchair users. So basically now um, there's a distance between uh, the Ubin jetty, which is the existing one, and the new uh, Ubin uh, Living Lab, the new jetty that will be built here. Ideally, um, when the floating, uh, new floating pontoon jetty is built, uh, they would access it through there. And uh, once they come through Ubin Living Lab, uh, which is the new accessible jetty, then they just need to board like a van. Uh, there are vans on Ubin which uh, operate like taxis. And so the van opens up from the back, if you can imagine. You know, those mini vans, you know, they have a rear entrance. They open it up. Uh, we use ramps actually to... Uh, bring the uh, residents on wheelchairs onto the, the van. If you recall one of the previous uh, photos, uh, we've actually shown you all that uh, during, the, I think it was the circuit breaker uh, period, we had that photo, we showed how we uh, bring the wheelchair user onto the van. And so basically they can commute around the island uh, with the van. 
And I, I think that basically explains uh, not just commuting between the existing jetty and the new jetty, uh, but also around uh, the rest of Ubin. I think that's a okay. that's a very good question on the accessibility of the vents as well, um, because I think uh, getting onto the island is just one part of things. Um, the bum boat is another thing that we probably need to retrofit, as well as the existing vents on the island also needs to be retrofitted. So it's not just building a floating pontoon and that solves the problem. That's only our first part of this journey. So accessible Ubin will be there to push on further for accessibility in the island itself. So thank you so much for the question on the how the residents actually uh, get from the new jetty uh, to, their living, to their living quarters. So thank you so much. Um, in fact, yes, uh, you can go on to our Facebook page. There are a lot more images being shared there on how do we uh, really get the residents onto the, um, onto the transport facilities within the island itself. Yes. Okay. I think Thank that's you. all from us. Thank you so much, coming. Over to you. Thank you, Colin and Albert, for such an interesting session. It's so fascinating to find out what everyone hopes to see in the new jetty. With all these talks about the new jetty, I can't wait to see the real thing. Okay. Um... Yes, we can't wait for it too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so... While Ubin can't be accessible to all overnight, we strive to bring Ubin closer to more people with an array of virtual tours by NParks. This is to let everyone learn more about Ubin without having to leave their house. Do check them out on our YouTube channel, NParks SG. For example, we have a virtual tour that takes you to the restored kampong houses on Ubin. Also, if you are interested to learn more about historical military artifacts, do check out our virtual tour to the military installation found in National Police Cadet Corps Camp Resilience. This is not usually open to the public, so do make use of this opportunity to see how it looks like. Up next on Ubin Day webinar, we will be joined by Kim Choi and Ding Li from the Bird Group of Nature Society, Singapore. If you love birds, this is a talk not to be missed. The duo will share with you some tips on bird watching sites in Ubin and how some of the fascinating birds, uh, some, some fascinating birds could be found there. If you haven't signed up for these talks, fret not. You may still join us with the meeting links we share on the Zoom chat. Or you may watch them live on our YouTube channel, NPARKS SG. This brings us to the end of our session. Thank you, Colin and Albert, once again for sharing with us. And thank you to all of you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the session. For our YouTube audience, we'll say goodbye to you first. Do share your feedback with us by assessing the URL in the description below. For Zoom audience, please stay on for a short while while we take a very quick group photo together. Okay, YouTube audience, Signing off. See you.